All right, welcome to the weekend review for February 16th, 2024, where we go over index futures, bonds, and currencies. So let's get right into it. So here we got the E-mini S&P 500 chart. We're on the weekly chart right now. So you can see that at the time of this recording, we have made all-time highs, which is crazy to see where we've came from. We had the virus here, and you can see we've been shooting up ever since. A little scare in 2022, had everyone thinking the market was crashing, but we are now at all-time highs. So what do we expect going forward? So looking at the chart, looking at this weekly chart, you never want to go against the higher time frame trend. So I am bullish until proven otherwise. What would prove otherwise? I would need some type of shift in market structure or a change in the state of delivery on the weekly chart for me to start looking for bearish prices. And what do I mean by that? We have to close below the opening of this candle. So let me mark that out right here. If we close below this dotted blue line, then maybe I'll start to look for bearish prices and we could potentially trade into this imbalance and this order block and then maybe go into these discount arrays down here. But until then, we are looking for bullish prices. So looking at this past week, you can see that we had a fair value gap right here. Let me mark that out. So we have the weekly fair value gap here. And the low on this candle is 49.37 and three quarters. And the low on this candle is 49.36.50. So we trade into that weekly fair value gap. And you can see that the reaction that we had, we ended up closing above here. So that is looking good for people looking for prices to go higher. So that is why I'm still bullish. Let's drop down to a daily chart. You can see we had these gaps right here, this volume imbalance lined up with that weekly fair value gap. We touched it on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday were days. And then to end the week on Friday, we had a little bit of a retracement, but I am still bullish. What would change my mind on a daily chart for a sh short term is if we close through mean threshold of this down close candle. So if we close below, my bad, let's do it with the bodies. If we close below this dotted green line at 5,002.75, if we close below that, then I would look for price to trade into consequent encroachment of this wick and potentially into this order block and these imbalances. But until then, we can see early next week, trade down into this dotted green line, have some type of reaction and send us higher. So that is it for the daily chart. We could drop down to a four hour chart. Actually, let me redraw this line. So I have mean threshold measuring from wick to wick and the bodies. And we're gonna drop down to the four hour chart to see are there any imbalances. And we're gonna drop down to the four hour chart to see if there are any imbalances that line up with those mean threshold levels. So. You can see we don't really have any imbalances. We have this um, balanced price range because we traded through it, or you can call it inverted fair value gap. When I refer to balanced price ranges, I'm basically saying it's an inverted fair value gap lined up with a fair value gap right here. So we have this fair value gap right here that price can trade into. If we're going to be bullish, price can trade into it and then send us higher. If we're going to be bearish, like I said, I need to see price close below these levels. And then we can see bearishness going into all of next week and possibly to end the month. We are in the second week of February. So that is it for the index futures. That's what I'm looking for right now. Now let's go over to bonds. So looking at bonds weekly chart, we can see that price traded into this fair value gap right here. And we've been having a nice reaction off of it. And the cool thing about bonds is it tends to stay in a certain trend for a number of weeks, as you can see. So when it's bearish, it's going to stay bearish. When it's bullish, it's going to be bullish for a few weeks. Bonds doesn't tend to go back and forth as much as index futures and currencies do. So bonds like to stay in their trend for a longer period of time. But you can see that we had this fair value gap. We trade into it, go down. We create a bearish order block accompanied with another fair value gap and we hit that very very nice reaction we've had two bearish weeks to follow that reaction right there 
And where do I think price can go to next week? So for next week, I am looking at this fair value gap right here to hit early next week. So I want to see what is the reaction when we hit this level? Do we have some type of shift in market structure with a discount fair value gap with the right time of day on the hourly or 15 minute chart after hitting this? And then that can send us higher. Or do we just crush and run right through it and continue into this imbalance right here going into next week? That would be a very, very large range week. But anything is possible. We're going into some crazy times, but not going to get too far into that. But what I'm looking for next week is this fair value gap. So let's go down to a daily chart. And let me delete that. So you can see this fair value gap doesn't really line up with any fair value gap on the daily chart, but we do have this order block right here. So I'm going to measure that order block out and we are going to measure consequent or my bad mean threshold of that order block right there. So I have the order block measured with mean threshold and it's lined up with a weekly fair value gap. So that is the target that I'm looking for going into next week. And I want to see the reaction that we have. Do we trade right through mean threshold and close through mean threshold? If we do, then we can see some type of boom, go back into it, treat this like an inversion fair value gap and treat this like a mitigation block or a breaker and then send us lower going for these lows right here. Now, this is a little bit longer term because that would be a very large range week. This can po possibly happen in one to three, four weeks, but... This is what I'm looking at for bonds going into the future. So let's drop down to a four hour chart. I want to see in this daily order block, do we have some type of four hour imbalance? If not, then that is more of an indication that we might just trade right through it. But let's see what we have. So on the four hour chart, you can see that we do have a little bit of the imbalance left. So we can sweep out these, these lows, my bad, and then have some type of reaction next week. So we are definitely going to watch that right here. So from this, this, this line, let's make it purple. So that range right there, and you can see that it lines up with mean threshold of that daily order block. So we're going to see what reaction we have there. It would be very nice if early in the week, so when you're expecting a bearish week, if Monday and Tuesday are bullish days, then that's more of an indication that we're probably going to reach into these levels. But let's say Monday and Tuesday go straight for it, then we can have some type of reversal and then try to work back to a premium. And then we'll see if this is a straight up reversal or is it just a retracement to send us lower. But because we are bearish, we stay with the trend. Bonds like the trend for a long time. We are basically looking for Monday or Tuesday to trade higher. We have some imbalances here and Will it basically have a reaction and send us lower on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday? That's like the classic week that you'd like to see when you're bearish or bullish. To, and then you want to basically see manipulation against whatever your bias is early in the week and then go lower. If you're familiar with the power of three, just treat the weekly range like power of three. So Monday and Tuesday is like your manipulation. And then, or my bad, Monday and Tuesday, Monday's like your accumulation then Tuesday, possibly Wednesday is like your manipulation. And then you see the distribution afterwards. So that's what we're looking for in bonds. Pretty straightforward. And let's go over to currencies. So we're looking at the dollar. The dollar has been range bound for a while, as we expected with currencies. But looking at the weekly chart, we have this fair value gap that we have traded into. And you can see we did have a nice wick reaction off of that fair value gap. However, remember how I said bonds, I'm, I'm expecting it to be bearish. If bonds is going to be bearish, then you ideally want to see the dollar be bullish, right? So we are range bound. So it's hard to get a good read on this market. We are also within a balanced price range right here. We are. So that inverted fair value gap lined up with this fair value gap we are within that balanced price range, you see the bodies haven't closed through it yet. So that is not a strong sign for bullishness, which is what you would want to see if bonds is going to be bearish. But we are in a mixed market right now, which is, makes it very hard to read. And what do I mean by that? We have 
a dollar that can go either way. We have index futures, which has been very, very bullish, while the dollar's also been bullish. Usually they trade opposite of each other. And then you have the bonds market, which has been bearish. So we have all three markets out of sync with each other. And usually when that happens, there are some big moves on the way. And unfortunately, that also lines up with big things happening around the world. So I say that to say this, be careful trading right now. We are in very volatile times and things can kick off anytime now. And think, and when that happens is when you'll see the market get back in sync and you'll see dollar trading bullish while all the other asset classes trade bearish or vice versa. But for right now, we are just focusing on scalping. But gun to my head, if I had to pick where this market would go, I would pick buy side and see it go for this high right here. That's what I would think long term for this quarter. But I really don't know what can happen. So that high right there, make it bigger. The reason why I picked that high is we ran sell side here, ran sell side here. So we ran sell side twice. And we just have this high just sitting here. And it's not an intermediate term high. Meaning we haven't traded to consequent encroachment of this wick yet. Even when you measure the fair value gap using the wick, we still haven't traded to consequent encroachment. So because of that, gun to my head, I would like to see this high get taken out. But anything really can happen. We can see price just start to go lower. But I would like to see index futures continue bullish as well. So... It's a lot of mixed things happening because if index futures is continuing bullish, then you want to ideally see this be bearish, but that's not required for index futures to be bullish. So looking at this dollar chart, gun to my head, I want to see it reach up into this imbalance, but anything really can happen. So we'll take it day by day and let's move on to the daily chart. So looking at the daily chart, that weekly imbalance we have a bigger daily imbalance. You can see the bodies respecting it very nicely. And then we had a trade. We had a trade back into this buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. Let me delete these lines. And we didn't close through it. We had a very big body day. And then we saw price wick up into this volume imbalance. And then we had it rejected intraday and closed below here. So that tells me that we could see Monday, Tuesday trade low, take out this low, and we'll see how it reacts inside this order block. So if we are going to be bearish, it would have to close below, my bad, let me do it with the bodies. It would have to close below this green line, which is constant, my bad, mean threshold of this order block. If it closes below mean threshold, then we are indeed bearish and we have imbalances and imbalances here and sell side here. But... Like I said, gun to my head, something's just telling me that dollar is not done going higher and that it wants to clean out this consolidation here. We also have a low resistance liquidity run because we failed to make the higher high versus if this made a higher high, that would be a high resistance liquidity run. So we have a low resistance liquidity run with a consolidation. I like to see that go higher. You can see the market maker buy model if we were forming that. So we have, boom, that reclaimed order block. And then we have, boom, this reclaimed order block. Let me make them different colors so you can distinguish between them. So we have this reclaimed order block. Why did I pick that one? Because it's consolidation, drop down, retrace. Drop down, retrace. Drop down, consolidate, drop down, go up. So where was the last retracement for real? Right here. So you can see once we closed above it, we have the imbalance, boom, go higher. And then we have the second one here and we have imbalances within it. We have this imbalance here too. So you can see the market maker buy model forming. If we take our measurements, pick market maker buy model, you can see that 20, 30% of the range, boom. Then we have where we expect the second stage to happen right here between these orange dotted lines boom, going higher, and we haven't reached the 70 to 80% range yet. So that is why I think that we're not done going higher and we're going to reach for these highs. Even though 
index futures is also bullish. So that's it for this review. I hope you guys found this insightful. I know the markets are very tough right now. If you are having a tough time trading, don't be too hard on yourself. This is a very, 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 very difficult time to trade any market right now. So if you are trading, my advice is to stick to scalping, getting in, getting out quick. Don't stay in the trade for more than three to four hours. And definitely don't hold trades over one day. And definitely do not hold them over a weekend. But I'll continue to drop these weekend commentary for you guys every week. And I hope it helps with your trading. Until the next one, I'll see you.